to become a paramedic or a technician in the, the service, you have to be a certain type of person. You have to be fairly resilient. 999 road activated. Have to have an inquisitive mind. So learning never stops once you're qualified. Every day is a school day. With recent events in the UK, this is sadly a familiar scene. Thankfully, today is just a training exercise. It's hoped the team will never have to put this into practice. Yet, if the worst happens, they're ready. So it was an RTC where a car had driven through a number of people. And once the emergency service arrived, the terrorists uh, got out with a firearm. We're not expecting a terrorism attack in Jersey. But um, if you take the Cumbria incident, they weren't expecting some uh, lone shooter to go around uh, shooting people. Um, we just got to be prepared for any eventuality. Um, we hope it never happens, um, but we need the training and the preparation to, to be able to deal with it should it happen. It was all about um, dealing with, with catastrophic injuries. Um, they train for that anyway. There's, the only difference between being this incident puts a lot more pressure on you and you're wearing equipment that you're not really familiar with. But those um, abilities to deal with those multiple injury patients um, goes across to their normal work um, when we go to sort of road accidents or uh, that sort of incident. And becoming fully trained for that normal work is no mean feat. Starting at technical stage, these new recruits are being put through their paces. Myself and Tom, we're actually trained technicians, we're ex-military, so we did our training all before. Um, so we're going to do a bit of third man in once we've finished our driving course to get used to the different setup and obviously treating different patients and things like that. And then we'll be on the road um, pretty quickly, I think, which we're looking forward to. A small background in health, a family background, but um, previously, yeah, I'm starting from scratch. Um, so yeah, my training is a lot more intensive. Um, so it took me about 18 months. It's not just medical knowledge that's needed in these roles. Their driver training is crucial, so they can get to patients quickly and safely. Back on. Oncoming vehicle taken up right position for a positive response. Positive response from vehicle ahead. How do you present yourself? Boldly, but not aggressively. Entrances on the left. It's a, it's a very practical skill. It's not difficult, but it, you do need to have really good spatial awareness. Again, very much so in Jersey because of our very narrow roads and high volumes of traffic. Trying to learn in a, in a classroom situation, it's always false, isn't it? So if you can actually do blue light driver training to a real emergency, so you get the real feeling and the red mist and the uh, concentration that's required to go out to a real emergency, yeah, it's invaluable for them. Those on the front line aren't the only ones who have to provide safe transport. This is the intermediary crew. Their work often goes unnoticed as they deal with patients who aren't in an emergency. Um, a patient today um, had some issues which were easier dealt with in the UK so that um, they were transferred by flight um, over to Oxford, I think they were going today. We do lots of transfers around from different wards to nursing homes. We also do transfers the other way so that if somebody has an injury uh, doctors request to take them into hospital rather than having a frontline vehicle tied up. From frontline staff to those behind the scenes, a team working tirelessly to look after people in need. It's a fantastic job, it's really rewarding and I don't regret it for one second.